قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وكونوا مع الصادقين صدق الله العلي العظيم صلوا على محمد وآل محمد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in Surah At-Tawbah, the ninth surah of the Holy Quran, verse number 119. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, O you who believe, ittaqu Allah, fear Allah, wa kunu ma'a sadiqeen, and be with the truthful ones. This day of Ashura is the day of truth. Ashura is the day that determines if we truly are among the truthful ones. If we are following them, if we are true in our claim that we wish to be with them. In every supplication, in every dua, the first thing that we cry and we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to hasten the return of the master of our time, صاحب العصر والزمان عجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف But when he returns and if we are blessed with being able to witness his holy presence will we truly follow him or will we be like the people of Kufa who wrote thousands of letters to Imam Hussein alayhi salam come come the swords are ready the armies are ready for you but when the, he came they abandoned him. When he needed them in the moment of truth, he was left alone. When we ask for the return of our Imam, are we truthful or are we like the people of Kufa? Muslim ibn Aqin alayhi salam was the cousin of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. When the people of Kufa sent the letters to Imam Hussein alayhi salam begging him to come lead them against Yazid, Imam Hussein alayhi salam knew that they had betrayed his father Imam Ali alayhi salam they had betrayed his brother Imam Hassan alayhi salam and in order so that people do not say that he went there blindly he sent his cousin Muslim ibn Aqil alayhi salam to verify the truth of their claims the strength of their allegiance and to see if the letters were true so Muslim ibn Aqil enters Kufa and the people come in waves and waves thousands upon thousands pledging allegiance to Imam Hussein alayhi salam on the hand of Muslim ibn Aqil Muslim ibn Aqil writes to Imam Hussein alayhi salam to come the people are ready their swords are ready to defend you upon hearing this Yazid sends a wicked person to replace the current governor of Kufa this new person by the name of Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad. He comes and finds out that the people are pledging allegiance to Muslim. So what does he do? He threatens the people with death. Whoever follows Muslim, whoever pledges allegiance to Imam Hussein on the hand of Muslim, then his life and his wealth and his family are halal for us. We can kill him, we can take his property and his family as our prisoners. What does Muslim do? Muslim ibn Aqil, he begins an uprising in Kufa against Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad. So that his soldiers, battalions of his soldiers are surrounding the palace of Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad. And all they have to do is break the door down and victory is theirs. What does Ubaidullah do? He uses the trickery of gold. He promises to those that if you put down your swords, you will get gold. Trade your sword for the gold. Why kill yourself? Why cause bloodshed? Why cause fitna? Why cause disunity between the Muslims? Give up your weapon and I will give you gold. So little by little, either by the fear of death or because of the promise of gold, one by one they left, abandoned, deserted Muslim Ibn Aqil until he was the only sword 
left to defend Imam Hussein alayhi salam in Kufa. Allah says, وَكُونُوا مَعَ الصَّادِقِينَ To be with the truthful ones. Are we with Muslim Ibn Aqil in the dark and lonely nights of Kufa? Or do we fall for the threats of death and harm and persecution and oppression? Or do we fall for the deceit and the promise of gold? Because in both ways people disobey Allah. The truth is there and manifest before them. But they still disobey Allah even when the truth is clear in front of them. Hur ibn Ziyad was a general in the army of Yazid and he was instrumental in stopping Imam Hussein alayhi salam's advance. He was known as a brave and powerful warrior. So when Imam Hussein alayhi salam on the day of Ashura made the call, who is there to help me? Hal min nasirin yansuruni? Who is there to help me? Who is there to help the Ahlul Bayt of the Prophet? Hur heard this call and he started little by little to make his way towards the camp of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. As he was making his way, the other soldiers in Yazid's army noticed that he was getting closer and closer to the camp of Imam Hussein. One of them looked at Hur and he said to him, he said, Hur, I have never seen you in battle in a similar state in which you are now. Why? Because Hur was going towards the camp and his body was trembling. Like a leaf in the wind, his body was trembling. So they thought he was trembling from fear. He said to Hur, the soldier said, if I would have been asked as to who is the most brave among the people of Kufa, I would not hesitate to take your name. What is this state I see when? Why are you trembling out of fear? Hur answered, I find myself between paradise and hellfire. And by Allah, I shall not exalt or choose anything except paradise, even if I am cut into pieces or I am burned in the fire. So he was on his horse, he struck his horse, and he went towards the camp of Imam Hussein alayhi salam with his hands above his head like a prisoner. When he reached Imam Hussein alayhi salam, he surrendered himself. And he said to Imam Hussein, may I be sacrificed for you, O the son of the messenger of Allah. I am the one who stopped you from returning. I accompanied you all along and I forced you to stop here. But I did not know that these people would refuse your proposal and bring you to this present state. By Allah, if I had known that they would do to you as they have done, I would not have undertaken what I did. So I repent to Allah for what I've done. Then do you think that my acceptance my repentance will be accepted. If this decision was put in any one of our hands, that the person who stops Imam Hussein in Karbala, cuts him off from the water, prevents him from leaving and going to safety, would we forgive this person? But look at the magnanimity and the mercy of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, like, just like his grandfather Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, he is rahmatul lil alameen, he is the mercy to all the worlds. He says, may Allah accept your tawbah, your repentance. So come down from your horse. But Hur, he says, it is better for me to stay mounted on this horse and to serve you by fighting against the enemy because eventually I will fall down from the horse. Meaning I will go and perform jihad against this enemy in your defense and they will cut me down and I will become shaheed. At least let me do this. So Imam Hussein alayhi salam says, may have May Allah have mercy on you. Go and do as you desire. So Hur, as a free man, making a free choice, not succumbing to the threat of death, not being tricked by the promise of gold, he makes the right decision and he chooses to be with the truthful one, Imam Hussein alayhi salam, even if it means that it costs him his life. And Hur's story is our story. Hur's situation is the situation of every single one of us. Whenever we are faced with an opportunity to disobey Allah, we are making the decision between paradise and hellfire. Whether it's a small sin or a major sin, it doesn't matter. All of it is sin. 
As Imam Ali alayhi salam, he says, do not look at the smallness or the greatness of the sin, but look at the greatness against which that sin is being committed. Look at the greatness of Allah. Do not look at the size of the sin. So whenever we have a chance to sin, we must make a decision like Hur. His story resonates with every human being because the truth has been distinguished from falsehood. All the arguments are clear. The choice has been left to us. Allah says we have given you sight and hearing. We have made all of the arguments clear to you. Imma shakira wa imma kafura. Now it is up to you to be grateful and choose the right path or to reject the truth. All of the responsibilities on you. So this Ashura is a story of repentance, of mercy, and of forgiveness. So no matter what sins we have committed, can any of our sins be worse than what Hur has done? He has caused and attributed to the murder of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. What have we done that is worse than that? Brothers and sisters, there are many people waiting in the hall, so if everyone could please move as far as possible to the front. May Allah have mercy on you and reward you, insha'Allah. Please move forward as much as possible so the other brothers and sisters can join us in the hall. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. So when Imam Hussein alayhi salam forgives Hur and accepts Hur with open arms and Hur becomes one of the shuhada, one of the great martyrs of Karbala, then we should not think small of Imam Hussein. We should not belittle and insult his mercy and think that he's going to reject us. No matter what we have done in our lives, Imam Hussein alayhi salam's door is open. His arms are open to embrace you and take you and accept you, forgive you, and be your guide. So like Hur, make that decision. Because the pleasure of the acceptance of Imam Hussein alayhi salam is greater than all of the wealth and all of the pleasure of this world. On the night of Ashura, Imam Hussein alayhi salam gathered his family and companions and all those who were with him in the camp. And he freed them of their allegiance. He said that you are free to go. The night is dark, under cover of darkness. If you want, you can leave and I have no right over you. So those who were not sincere in their allegiance, they left. But those few who were sincere and truthful, they remained with Imam Hussein alayhi salam. And they reaffirmed. They pledged their allegiance once again, falling at the feet of their blessed Imam and saying that they would give their entire lives to the last breath and to the last drop of blood to defend Imam Hussein alayhi salam. And after the companions had reaffirmed their allegiance to Imam Hussein, then a youth, Qasim ibn Hassan, Qasim, the son of our second Imam, Imam Hussein alayhi salam, this youth comes to Imam Hussein alayhi salam and asks a question. He says, am I also listed among the shuhada, the martyrs of Karbala? Imam Hussein alayhi salam looks at this wonderful youth and says, how do you view death? How do you view martyrdom? How is, does it seem in your eyes? And he answers with bravery, without any hesitation. He says, it is sweeter to me than honey. This is the situation of the youth of the camp of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Do our youth today stand with the youths of Karbala? Do they behave like the youths of Karbala? Do they have allegiance to Islam like the youths of Karbala? Or do they waste their best years of life addicted to entertainment? Addicted to the video games, the computer, the iPhones, this phone and that phone. Whatever type of entertainment it is, our youth are addicted. Is this how the youth of Karbala would have spent their lives? We should not say that the youth are just our future. If we keep on saying that only that they are our future, then their training and their education and their reform will be delayed till tomorrow. 
We keep saying they're the future. It keeps on getting delayed until tomorrow. We should say that the youth are our present and our future so that they can start being righteous and pious and truthful and true followers of Imam Hussein alayhi salam from this day. When the youth came to Imam Hussein alayhi salam and asked to go to the battle, did he say, no, you are our future. Wait until tomorrow. Wait until you grow up. Wait until you finish school, you finish graduate school, you get a good job, then you can start being righteous. Do the parents of our community, do they raise their children like Qasim, Abdullah, the sons of Muslim Ibn Aqil? Or do they think that bringing them to the masjid and giving them a proper Islamic education is going to become an obstacle? It'll get in the way of their school, it's going to get in the way of their college, it's going to get in the way of them having a successful career. Is this the type of attitude that our parents have? You should not stop the youth from following the Islamic path in major life decisions. For example, and I give this example because this is something which comes up a lot and I'm asked about a lot. And I'm complained, I hear a lot of complaints about this. One of the things that parents prevent their children from doing, do not allow their children to make a decision and an important Islamic life decision, is that they prevent their children from be getting married until they finish graduate school and get a very high paying job. They express their desire for marriage and this desire for marriage is the same as a desire for food and water. This is a human instinct that Allah has put in every human being without exception to anyone. So your children who want to get married but they have not finished school yet. What is their situation? It is as if they are standing in front of a thousand doors. One of those doors is marriage. 999 doors are doors of sinning. And if we close the door of marriage to them, where do we think they will go? They have a desire. If we prevent them from fulfilling their desire in a halal and permissible way, then the parents should not be surprised. They should not be shocked when their children go and fulfill their desires in a haram and forbidden way. There is one door to perform it in the correct way and that is marriage. But there are hundreds or thousands of ways to perform it in a haram and forbidden way. And all of the excuses that the parents might bring up for every hardship that they think is going to come upon their children if they get married young and while they're still in school, Allah has provided an easy solution for that. Whoever fears Allah and is pious, Allah makes an easy way to solve all of his problems for him. Allah opens many doors for you whenever you have problems and you rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of these excuses that are brought up, we should understand that these are tricks and deceits of shaitan. Anytime a person brings an excuse to stop someone from obeying Allah, that excuse is a trick of shaitan. You are young, you're not ready for marriage, you're not ready to go to Hajj, you're not ready to start being religious. Tomorrow, 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 sometimes tomorrow never comes, sometimes death comes before tomorrow. Islam says now. Take care of your problems now. Take care of your needs in the halal way right now. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recounts in the Quran, Surah Al-Hijr, the 15th Surah, chapter of the Holy Quran, verses 28 to 46. The story of Adam alayhi salam. How Allah placed him in the garden. Shaitan tricked him and his wife into eating of the forbidden fruit and how they were sent to this world. And then after that, Adam alayhi salam repented to Allah. His repentance was accepted. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, later in the story, the Quran says, when your Lord said to the angels, surely I am going to make a complete mortal of the essence of black mud fashioned in shape. And the story goes on until Allah commands the angels to perform sajda to Adam alayhi salam. Everyone knows the story. All the angels, they perform sajda, they prostrate to Adam alayhi salam out of respect, of course not out of worship. 
except Iblis, except Shaitan. He said, I am made of fire, he is made of the dirt of the earth, I'm better than him. The first racist, Shaitan. So because of this, he was expelled from the presence of Allah. He was exiled from the high station that he had. And he asked Allah, he said, give me until the day of judgment. Don't punish me right now. Give me until the day when everyone is resurrected again. Allah does not reject his request, but he says no until an appointed time. Not until the day of judgment, but up until a certain time. And what does shaitan say? He says, I will stand in the path of all of your servants. He says, my Lord, because you have made life evil for me, I will certainly make the evil and sin look good to the children of Adam on the earth, and I will cause all of them to deviate. I will cause all of them to deviate, except your righteous servants. So shaitan's plan against mankind is alive today, and it will continue until the return of our Imam. So everyone must be vigilant. Everyone must be on watch. Al what does Allah say about shaitan? He is aduwu mubin. Innahu lakum aduwu mubin. He is an open enemy to you. Allah has warned you. Allah has told you over and over and over. Do not fall for the tricks of shaitan. In the battlefield of Karbala, when the thirst and the desire for water intensified. One of the companions of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, Yazin ibn Hasin Hamdani, he comes to Imam Hussein alayhi salam and he says, give me permission to go to Umar ibn Sa'd. Maybe I can convince him to clear the path to the water. The enemy had blocked the access of Imam Hussein and his camp to water. So he said, let me go try to convince him. Imam Hussein alayhi salam gives him permission. So Yazid ibn Hasin goes, but when he sees Umar ibn Sa'd, he does not say salam to him. He does not greet him. Umar ibn Sa'd says, Oh my brother from Hamadan, do you not consider me a Muslim? Because you have not given me the salam. And this companion of Imam Hussein alayhi salam replies, he says, If you had been a Muslim as you say, you would not have come to kill the family of the Prophet of Allah. You would not have stopped the water of the Farat, the Euphrates from him, his brothers and his women folk and his family, the water which the pigs and the dogs, they are allowed to drink in order that they may die from thirst. You do not let them have any of it and then you claim that you recognize Allah and the Prophet. Umar ibn Sa'd, he is being insulted here. So what does he say? He bows his head in shame because he knows the truth and he admits it he says I am aware that oppressing and persecuting them is haram it is forbidden but Ubaidullah my governor he has left the entire community and chosen me for a very difficult task and I left for it at that very moment by Allah I cannot understand and I'm stopped at a dangerous turn which I do not hold dear should I leave the governorship and the rule of a very beautiful land which I have been promised or should I return with the blood of Imam Hussein upon myself and his murder would be a cause of me entering into the hellfire which is unavoidable but that land that rule that power that wealth that I am promised it is beautiful in my eyes Umar ibn Sa'd and Hur ibn Yazid they were given the same choice both of them understand that Imam Hussein alayhi salam is on the truth and Yazid is evil, a tyrant and he's in falsehood. But who makes the right decision and who makes the wrong decision? Our daily decisions that we make to obey or disobey Allah, they determine whether we stand with Hur or whether we stand with Umar ibn Sa'd. Do we cry for Imam Hussein alayhi salam but at the same time we disobey Allah like Umar ibn Sa'd? Ashura is the day when every aspect of our truthfulness is tested. Imam Hussein alayhi salam he says that every day is Ashura and every land is Karbala. Why does he say this? This can be, this can be understood in two ways. Number one, that Ashura is the most significant tragedy in the history of the world. That that day 
A tragedy happened like no other in history. The second meaning we get from it is that Ashura and its mission and its message is an eternal struggle between good and evil, an eternal struggle between truth and falsehood. Therefore, whether before Ashura or after Ashura, this struggle goes on. And why is Ashura considered the most significant? The most terrible tragedy in the history of mankind. There were many other tragedies where thousands or even millions of people were killed and tortured and persecuted. Because the day of Ashura exemplifies every teaching of Islam. Ashura revived and gave new life to the Prophet's Sunnah. Because the Quran was among the people. They had the book, but they did not have the Sunnah of the Prophet. And without the Sunnah of the Prophet, they have no Quran. It is not possible to have one without the other. The Sunnah without the Prophet is not, the Sunnah without the Quran is not possible. The Quran without Ahlul Bayt is not possible. And Ashura was the combination of virtues like no other tragedy in history. There was no event like this where the purest saints performed the most heroic sacrifice for the greatest of truths against the most evil of tyrants. What were some of these virtues? Bravery in the face of danger. Loyalty when everyone else ran away and fled. Piety at taqwa at every moment. Generosity when only having very little. Charity even to the enemy who wants to kill you. Wisdom when others are confused. Knowledge in the face of jahiliyyah and ignorance, the love of ibadah and worship, the dhikr and remembrance of Allah, integrity in the face of corruption, patience when there is tragedy, sacrifice of what is most precious and dear, humility to the truth, the passion, and the energy and the zeal of youth, the relentless spirit of warriors, Chivalry and bravery and courage over cowardice. The purity of purpose, the sincerity of intention, the firmness of commitment and the conviction of faith, the most righteous of all missions and love, love in its purest form. These virtues and every other virtue which is possible for a human being was displayed in Karbala in its highest and most noble form. And there was no parallel for this in history. This is why the tragedy of Karbala of Imam Hussein alayhi salam is like no other. And all those in history who people consider as heroes, who people look up to, who people admire and say, I wish I could be like that person, all of those heroes look to Imam Hussein alayhi salam as their hero. He is the king of kings and the hero of the heroes. So do not give any person or any desire or any idea a preference to your Imam. As the followers of Imam, of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, you have been blessed, you have been chosen. Do not think that this bounty that you have, that you say, I am a Shia, a follower, a lover of Imam Hussein alayhi salam is something you did by yourself. Or that this is something which is possible by your own efforts. This is only a blessing of Allah that you are given. So you are blessed with this. Allah has chosen you and he has deputized you to continue the mission of Imam Hussein alayhi salam against ignorance. Who can bring the truth to the world except the followers of truth? Can we wait for the followers of any other religion, any other school of Islam to bring truth to the world? This is your responsibility. You cannot wait for others to do this. Who can spread the love of Imam Hussein alayhi salam to the rest of the world except you who love Imam Hussein more than any other? Do not wait for others to do this job for you because they cannot do this job. They cannot fulfill this mission. This duty has been given to you. And you will be responsible for it on the day of judgment. How will you answer Imam Hussein alayhi salam? When he says every opportunity and resource, everything you needed to spread his mission, to be his true follower was at your feet and in your hands, and yet you wasted it. You did not take advantage of it. Who is there 
to follow Imam Hussein, who was there to obey him except those who call him his followers and his Shia. So as Allah says, وَكُونُوا مَعَ الصَّادِقِينَ This day is the day to test whether we are fulfilling this command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, be with the truthful ones. Anytime we come to one of these gatherings, our understanding should be that when I listen to the sayings of the Prophet and his Ahlul Bayt and the verses of Quran and their meaning is explained to me, once I understand it, my duty is now to implement it in my life. If we leave this gathering, but we have not made a promise to implement this in our lives, we have done injustice to these gatherings. We have done injustice to Imam Hussein alayhi salam. His mission was not just for us to cry. It is a great virtue and a great act of worship to cry for Imam Hussein alayhi salam. But if we make that the end, of these gatherings and the sole purpose and we have missed his message so we make this promise we make this promise brothers and sisters that we will be with the truthful ones as Allah has said be with the truthful ones in order that you will become truthful ones so that then others will follow your truth wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh